Bluefin tuna fish are magnificent fish prized for their delicious taste and hold the title of the most expensive fish in the world. A Japanese restaurant owner has paid a record $3.1 million for single Pacific bluefin tuna. But how do fishermen catch millions of these fish across the vast ocean? In this video, we'll discuss the large-scale commercial fishing process for bluefin tuna, from cutting-edge technology to traditional techniques. Now, bluefin tunas are known to be expensive, but a New Year's auction in Tokyo over the weekend saw numbers reach new highs. We'll see how these fish travel thousands of miles on epic migrations, and how fishermen use this knowledge to their advantage. Join us as we discuss how fishermen catch millions of bluefin tuna every day through modern fishing technology. A purse seine is a fishing gear designed to scoop up massive schools of fish. This mighty net has a long wall of netting held afloat by a line of floats just like a swimming pool noodle. But unlike your pool noodle, it's also weighted below by another line to keep the net nice and deep. The secret weapon is that it rings along the bottom and closes shut like a purse drawstring. When a school of fish swims into the net, the purse line is pulled tight, keeping the bottom closed and trapping the fish inside. This technique is super effective for catching all sorts of big and small fish that love to swim in close-knit groups. This net targets fish that like to hang out near the surface especially in warmer waters. Think of young tuna, skipjack, and even some more petite guys like frigate tuna. They're all looking for yummy bait fish near the top layer of the water. And that's where the purse seine comes in. In colder waters, things can change a bit. Purse seine nets can also catch juvenile bluefin tuna when munching on bait fish near the surface. But sometimes these nets target the big fish too. Have you ever heard of tuna spawning? That's when they come up to the surface to mate, and purse seines can be used to catch them then. Here's the technical stuff behind this net. It's massive, 1,500 to 2,000 meters long, and up to 250 meters deep. The holes in the net are about 12 centimeters wide, and it has floats at the top to keep it bobbing near the surface, just like a giant pool noodle. At the bottom, weights and unique rings connect to a closing line. When the net is full of fish, they pull this line tight, like closing a purse shut, and the fish are trapped. There are also smaller purse seines used closer to shore for less industrial fishing operations. These target smaller fish and are sometimes used to catch other schooling fish like sardines and anchovies, depending on the season. Tuna purse signers come in all shapes and sizes, but the industrial ones are massive beasts, stretching anywhere from 45 meters to over 100 meters long. That's like putting three football fields end to end. These purse signers are decked out with all the bells and whistles. They've got a big boat called a skiff that helps haul in the net, sometimes even a few speedboats for extra muscle. And get this, some even have helicopters to spot schools of tuna from way up high. Talk about high-tech fishing. Now, closer to shore, you'll see smaller purse seiners. Depending on the season, these are around 20 to 50 meters long and tackle smaller fish, like juvenile tuna or even sardines and mackerel. They're kind of multi-tool boats ready for whatever fishy situation comes their way. All these purse seines have in common is this crazy strong winch called a power block. Imagine a giant crank that pulls in the bottom of the net like tightening a drawstring on a massive bag of fish. These purse seines can target fish in the deep ocean and closer to shore. They can go after fish down to 300 meters deep, but usually they focus on shallower depths, especially those prime tuna hangouts less than 70 meters down. Now to catch all these fish, purse signers go through a process called a set. It's like one big fishing operation from launching the net to hauling the catch back on board. This method is very effective, but it's barely in use anymore. But this isn't the only method for bluefin tuna fishing. Let's move to the others. Now that we've discussed one method of bluefin tuna fishing, are there other better methods than this? Is bycatch just accustomed to this method? Or are there other methods that have this con? Stay with us to find out.
Commercial tuna longlining employs a sophisticated method to target these prized fish in their oceanic habitat. The core equipment is the longline, composed of individual units often called baskets. Each basket has a central line stretching horizontally between 250 and 800 meters. Suspended from this main line are 4 to 15 branch lines, each equipped with a wire leader and a baited hook. Achieving the optimal depth for hook placement is critical for successful tuna capture. Longline depth can be controlled through a combination of factors. The primary method involves adjusting the intervals between floats on the main line. Additionally, float line length and deployment speed can influence depth somewhat. Finally, branch line length can offer some fine tuning for specific target depths. Industrial tuna longliners are substantial vessels, typically 30 to 70 meters long. These specialized craft are designed to meet the demanding requirements of offshore tuna fishing. Imagine a long line stretching for hundreds of meters across the deep blue. That's the essence of longlining. These lines aren't just dangling in the water. They're rigged with baited hooks, targeting tuna swimming in the subsurface zones, anywhere from 100 to 300 meters deep. There are two main types of long lines, conventional and deep. Conventional lines target shallower depths around 175 meters, while deep long lines can reach 300 meters. Pretty impressive, right? Now this isn't a one-hook operation. A typical long line setup involves hundreds of these baited hooks connected in sections. Buoys are attached at intervals to keep the line afloat. This massive setup can have over 3,000 hooks. It's important to remember that long lining is a complex operation. A Japanese restaurant owner has paid a record $3.1 million for single Pacific bluefin tuna. The specifics of how it's done can vary depending on the size of the boat, the equipment they have, and even the weather conditions. But the basic idea is the same. Cast out a giant underwater hook line and wait for the tuna to come swimming by for a tasty snack. Did you know a whole fleet of fishing vessels specifically targeting tuna? However, these aren't your average fishing boats. We're talking about industrial-sized operations using the tuna longlining technique. This method has a long history, and the Japanese perfected it in the 1930s. Initially, they used longlines to catch yellowfin tuna and albacore for the booming U.S. canning industry. But times changed, and by the 1970s, the focus shifted to bluefin tuna, which now makes up over 60% of their catch. Economics plays a significant role in fishing. Today, tuna longlining is a global operation. Countries like Taiwan, Korea, Indonesia, and even the U.S. have fleets using this technique. It's become a widespread way to catch tuna across the world's oceans, from the Indian to the Pacific. The thing is, tuna is important commercially. They're swimming worldwide in tropical and temperate waters, and longlining allows anglers to target them in these vast areas. Places like the Eastern Pacific and the Indian Ocean are prime tuna grounds, with longline fleets setting up shop to catch these valuable fish. But it's not all sunshine. Tuna longlining, like many fishing methods, has some environmental drawbacks. Sometimes, unintended catches happen. These are called bycatch. They can include things like young fish, other species like sharks, and even endangered animals like sea turtles and birds. This is something we want to minimize. The good news is that bycatch doesn't have to be a huge problem. There are a bunch of intelligent practices anglers can use to reduce it significantly. These are like fishing best practices that help protect the ocean while still catching tuna. Think of it like this. Unlike some complex fishing issues, reducing bycatch is something the industry can tackle head on. Fishermen can adopt these practices quickly and companies that buy tuna can play a significant role too. They can ask their suppliers to use these best practices and encourage others to do the same. Can this method be reconciled with the need for sustainable fishing practices? 
Can technological advancements minimize bycatch while still allowing fishermen to effectively target bluefin tuna? Come with us to find out. The capture of bluefin tuna, a highly prized fish species, presents a significant logistical challenge due to their migratory nature and vast ocean habitats. Modern fishing vessels, however, have emerged as marvels of technological innovation, employing sophisticated equipment to locate and harvest these elusive creatures efficiently. This report explores the cutting-edge sonar systems and specialized fishing gear that empower modern vessels to navigate the open ocean and secure significant bluefin tuna successfully catches. For example, we have advanced sonar technology. Modern fishing vessels eliminate the inherent uncertainty of open ocean fishing by utilizing advanced sonar systems, essentially underwater eyes that paint a detailed picture of the marine environment. These systems emit sound waves that bounce off objects and return, creating a real-time image of the seabed and any denizens swimming within. Moving on, we have the multi-beam sonar. This technology constructs a three-dimensional representation of the seabed, allowing captains to identify underwater structures such as canyons and seamounts, locations known to attract bluefin tuna. We also have the side-scan sonar, which functions similarly to a high-tech X-ray. Side-scan sonar scans the vessel's flanks, revealing schools of fish swimming alongside. Then, the acoustic fish finder. These targeted sonars emit high-frequency sound waves designed to detect schools of fish at varying depths. This allows crews to pinpoint bluefin tuna schools swimming beneath the surface. Once a school of bluefin tuna is located, the operation transitions from detection to capture. Modern vessels have specialized fishing gear designed to maximize catch efficiency. First, we have the fish aggregating devices, FADs. These devices act as underwater floating restaurants, attracting bluefin tuna with the promise of food. Modern FADs are equipped with GPS trackers and environmental sensors, allowing crews to monitor their location and effectiveness in attracting fish. Another technology is optimizing catch management. The pursuit of bluefin tuna goes beyond location and capture. Modern vessels utilize various technologies to ensure efficient handling and maintain the high quality of the catch. Automated baiting systems are also another modern technology in fish baiting. These systems streamline the laborious process of baiting longlines. They ensure consistent bait placement, saving valuable time at sea. Then the onboard processing facilities. These modern vessels often house built-in processing plants. These facilities enable immediate cleaning, gutting, and freezing of the catch. This rapid processing ensures the highest quality of the tuna, maximizing its market value. Lastly, there is the climate-controlled holds. Once processed, the tuna is stored in vast, temperature-controlled holds. These holds maintain sub-zero temperatures, preserving the freshness of the catch for the extended journey back to port. The technological landscape of modern fishing vessels is constantly evolving. The focus extends beyond efficiency to encompass sustainability. Researchers are developing sonar technologies to differentiate between target fish and bycatch species. This allows for more selective fishing practices, minimizing unintended catches. Additionally, gear design advancements minimize accidental catches and promote a healthier ocean environment. Having discussed the methods of catching bluefin tuna, we are left pondering how fishermen know when to go fishing. How do they know which area of the sea is more populated? Come with us as we discuss bluefin tuna fish's seasonal migration and spawning. The Atlantic and Pacific bluefin tuna, Thunus thinus and Thunus orientalis, respectively, are apex predators renowned for their exquisite flesh and remarkable migratory feats. 
these powerful fish undertake annual journeys spanning thousands of kilometers across vast ocean expanses, driven by a relentless pursuit of optimal feeding grounds and suitable breeding habitats. Talking about the complexities of bluefin tuna migration patterns is critical for appreciating their resilience and ensuring the sustainability of commercial fisheries that target these iconic species. Prices. So there's an opportunity to support that supply and take the pressure. Atlantic and Pacific bluefin tuna populations exhibit distinct migration patterns, each a testament to their sophisticated navigational abilities. Atlantic Odyssey. As winter relinquishes its grip on the western North Atlantic, primarily near Florida and the Caribbean, adult bluefin tuna emerge from a spawning dormancy. Bluefin tuna is one of the most amazing fish, in fact, one of the most amazing animals in the world. It's one of the very biggest fish in the ocean. Warmer water temperatures and a surge in hunger trigger a northward migration. Feeding frenzy in the North Atlantic, summer months witness bluefin tuna feasting in the nutrient-rich feeding grounds of the Grand Banks region in the Norwegian Sea. Here they consume large quantities of herring, mackerel, and sand lance, accumulating fat reserves essential for their upcoming journeys. Southward return, with the arrival of autumn and bellies full of energy-rich prey, Bluefin tuna initiate their southward migration. This journey leads them back to the warmer waters of the Mediterranean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, where spawning activities occur. Pacific Passage, young Pacific bluefin tuna, born in the balmy waters off the coast of Japan, embark on a remarkable westward migration around the age of one year. Leveraging the power of ocean currents, they traverse the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Hours later, they were heading back to Orange Beach Marina with a monster bluefin tuna. Eventually reaching the bountiful feeding grounds off the coasts of California and Mexico. This westward journey can cover distances exceeding 5,000 kilometers. Years of growth in the Eastern Pacific. These young tuna spend several years in the Eastern Pacific, living on nutrient-rich prey like sardines and squid. During this period, they mature and experience significant growth. The return to the West, upon reaching sexual maturity, typically around seven years of age, Pacific bluefin tuna undertake an eastward migration back to the Western Pacific. Similar to their initial migration, this return trip is facilitated by ocean currents and likely guided by an internal compass and memory of their natal grounds. Knowledge of bluefin tuna migrations plays a vital role in commercial fishing practices. By understanding these fish's seasonal movements and preferred feeding grounds, fisheries can target large schools with greater efficiency. The return of the blue finna tuna to UK waters. They're using high-tech acoustic tracking devices for the project. Fisheries leverages historical migration data, water temperature fluctuations, and ocean current patterns to predict the movements of bluefin tuna schools. Moving on, fishing fleets strategically position themselves in critical areas along the migration routes. Such as the feeding grounds off the coasts of North America and Europe, where schools of bluefin tuna congregate in high densities, the seasons for fishing are often established based on the migration patterns of bluefin tuna populations. This approach allows for some protection of spawning grounds and vulnerable age groups. However, the reliance on predictable migrations can challenge the long-term sustainability of bluefin tuna populations. Overfishing during peak migration periods can exert immense pressure on the species. Responsible management practices, including quotas and seasonal restrictions, are crucial to ensure healthy bluefin tuna populations for future generations. The world of bluefin tuna migration extends beyond these broad seasonal movements. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is the government agency tasked with monitoring everything from climate change and weather. Research suggests that these fish exhibit complex behaviors during their journeys. Some evidence indicates that they may undertake deep dives exceeding 3,000 feet, 
potentially to avoid predators or access cooler nutrient-rich waters. Additionally, researchers are actively investigating the role of social interactions and communication in guiding their migrations. But with these migrations becoming increasingly predictable, are we simply creating a moving target for overfishing? As we learn more about their complex migrations, can we develop sustainable fishing practices that respect these epic journeys and ensure the continued existence of bluefin tuna fish? Tuna, a culinary delight gracing plates worldwide, faces a growing challenge overfishing. The immense demand for this popular seafood has put immense pressure on tuna stocks. Now, bluefin tunas are known to be expensive, but a New Year's auction in Tokyo over the weekend saw numbers reach new highs, a sushi chain owner. Particularly in regions with prevalent industrial fishing practices. This has led to a worrying decline in certain species, like the iconic bluefin tuna. Can these populations recover? The picture of tuna isn't uniformly bleak. Thanks to improved management and conservation efforts, some species show signs of population rebounds. However, others like the Pacific bluefin tuna remain heavily depleted due to overfishing. This critical situation demands stricter regulations and global cooperation to safeguard these vulnerable fish. The key to a sustainable future for tuna lies in adopting eco-friendly fishing practices that maintain the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. Here's where methods like pole and line fishing come in. Using a single line and hook, this technique offers a highly targeted approach. Not only does it minimize bycatch of unintended species, but it also allows fishermen to release unwanted fish, ultimately contributing to overall tuna stock health. Another champion of sustainability is fad-free fishing. Fads, or fish aggregating devices, are essentially floating magnets for fish. While effective at attracting tuna, they often result in the unintended capture of juveniles and other marine life. By eliminating fads, fishermen minimize bycatch and lessen their environmental impact. This, in turn, supports tuna conservation by allowing them to reach maturity and reproduce, ensuring the species' long-term health. The fight for sustainable tuna goes beyond fishing methods. Innovative gear is also important. Biodegradable fishing lines and hooks break down naturally, reducing the risk of ghost fishing, lost gear that continues to trap unsuspecting creatures. Non-entangling fads attract tuna without harming them, further minimizing bycatch. These advancements are a win-win for tuna and the environment, reducing ocean plastic pollution. Time and area closures are another powerful tool. By strategically designating periods and zones where fishing is off limits, we create safe havens for tuna to breed and feed. These closures allow populations to rebound naturally, ensuring a healthy future for the species. This proactive approach demonstrates the fishing industry's commitment to sustainability, safeguarding tuna for generations to come. As the global affair with tuna continues, ensuring its long-term availability requires close attention. Strict monitoring and regulations are crucial to prevent overfishing and protect the delicate balance of our oceans. Technology plays a starring role in this effort. Imagine satellites and vessel monitoring systems acting as watchful eyes, tracking fishing boats, and ensuring they stay within designated areas and catch limits. This real-time monitoring helps prevent illegal, unreported, and unregulated IUU fishing, a sneaky practice that threatens both tuna populations and the rich tapestry of marine life. But technology isn't the only solution. International and regional organizations have also stepped in, establishing regulations to manage tuna stocks responsibly. These regulations act as guidelines, including catch limits, size restrictions on caught fish, and seasonal closures to protect spawning grounds. When these boundaries are set, the goal is to maintain healthy tuna populations while minimizing the impact on other marine species and their habitats would be possible. By embracing these eco-friendly practices, the fishing industry can be a champion for healthy oceans and ensure a thriving future for this valuable resource, tuna.